it is a system that can be used to decentralize trust, to create systems that can be trusted without anybody being in control. And we see that uh, kind of most strongly in the first blockchain, which is Bitcoin. These are uh, the open public systems that are borderless and neutral, censorship resistant, uh, open to all and not controlled by anyone. And then that concept can be taken to other applications. You can use it for all kinds of financial instruments. You can also use it for trusted applications like voting or governance of corporations. And again, that's uh, using the underlying structure, which is one where thousands of people collaborate, but no one's in charge. It's a ledger that tracks transactions and it gets compiled into blocks and the blocks are put together and it creates a chain. It's a ledger for tracking digital assets. With the internet, information turned digital. Uh, money has turned digital. Value has turned digital. Assets, you can actually own something, move it from one person to another. It can't be duplicated. That was a major breakthrough that Bitcoin brought us before Bitcoin, everything digital could be duplicated. And it gives people the ability to, to own their own assets and be in control of their lives. It's a chain of blocks, very inefficient database and that doesn't really scale well and very expensive. So the only real use case is actually like a store of value or um, um, sound money and everyone who participates in the network has a copy of it. So uh, it's very difficult to cheat because all other use cases you, you can probably use like a normal database for it. It's the world's most inefficient database. So what that means is like a normal database you can put data into it and you can get data out. Uh, it's just horrifically inefficient. But what that buys you is you kind of have this property of censorship resistance where no one can um, change the database or alter it or censor it. Open Bazaar uses Bitcoin or, and other cryptocurrencies um, because of this property of censorship resistance where we can enable people to trade directly with each other in a way that people can't intervene and prevent that transaction from taking place. A blockchain basically is a series of blocks that are validated by peers, which say something that is true, like a ledger. And instead of having some certain person or party say what's true, you have a whole bunch of people who validate a long chain, which is called these blocks in the blockchain to say, this statement's true, this statement's true, the previous one. So you're basically having people validate what's true rather than relying on a certain trusted central party like a bank to, val to validate what's true. like a chain of blocks. The, the, hint, the hint is in the name. The blocks are cryptographically linked. So like from the beginning to the end, they all follow each other like a snake. The blocks can contain things like transactions and it is typically secured by proof of work so that even though multiple chains um, or multiple forks of the chain might exist, the true one is the one with the greatest cumulative proof-of-work difficulty. It's a worldwide ledger that's not on one single computer, it's on everybody's computer that's running a copy of that particular blockchain software. Uh, Bitcoin being the most well-known one around the world, but there's a bunch of them at this point. So instead of that, being, that ledger being on one company's computer with maybe one or two backups off-site somewhere. It's on thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of computers around the world. Everybody has a copy of that ledger. No single computer is in charge of that ledger and they all update their ledger in sync with everybody else's copy of the ledger. And because it's on everyone's computer, there's no way that anybody, any outside party can come in and, and interfere or inject, interject things into that ledger that aren't supposed to be there. All currencies really are, are kind of ledgers that keep track of who has what. And so with currencies like gold, where you had physical coins or things like that, physical reality kept track of who had which coins where and who had possession of what. With Bitcoin, it's all digital, but there's a ledger that keeps track of who has how many Bitcoins. And just like physical reality limits the amount of gold in existence here on the Earth, uh, mathematical laws limit the amount of Bitcoins that are in existence on this ledger. And so then you can instantly transport them to or from anyone else anywhere in the world. That's incredibly useful as money. So. When I first heard about Bitcoin, I knew there wasn't any doubt in my mind. I knew that people were going to start using it as money. 
If you like my channel, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. I also have a Patreon account and wanted to give a special shout out to all the awesome people there. And a huge thank you to the sponsors of the show for making these videos possible. Thanks so much for watching. You know rappers like to rock chains. Rock, rock, rock chains, knock them up.